Welcome to another video. I'm going to take this definite integral, but I'm going to use a method that you don't often see used, and it's called the Weierstrass substitution. And this is the name in case um, you don't get it. It's this. So it's a German name. I had to learn how to say it correctly. It is Weierstrass. Weierstrass, or you can just say the R, Weierstrass, okay? Um, that's um, how you say it, and it's a T substitution. It simply says, if the denominator of an integral has a linear combination of sine or cosine, okay? Just sine or cosine, not sine squared, not cosine squared, just sine or cosine, like this, whether you have multiple of it, maybe it's three, or you have cosine, just do a T substitution where your T is the tan of the half angle X. Let T be equal to the tangent of X over two. And you see, as soon as you do this, you wanna make a rectangle as quickly as possible. I mean a triangle. So we're going to do our usual thing. We have a triangle. The angle is going to be x over 2. And if tan x over 2 is t, then this is t over 1, t over 1. And this has to be t squared plus, what would this be? t squared plus 1. We take the square root. So this is what we have as the triangle we're going to be using. And as soon as you've done this, why don't you go ahead and find what sine will be and what cosine will be because that saves the day because we're gonna use them, but briefly. Although, if you've done this several times, you don't need to go back to recompute the sine of this angle anymore because you already know what it's gonna be. I know what it's gonna be, okay? But let me just show you uh, in case this is the first time. So you're gonna have T equals this. What will sine? Sine X over two is going to be the sine of this angle is this over this is going to be t over the square root of t squared plus 1. And we're going to have cosine x over 2 is going to be 1 over, it's going to be 1 over the square root of t squared plus 1. Okay. And, and we can actually compute sine x immediately. Okay, let's just do that. I think it's better to do it. So sine x. Remember that sine x will be sine this plus this. So it's like saying sine two theta, where theta is this angle. But we know that sine two theta is equal to two sine this angle, cosine this angle. Okay, so these are all trig things that you need to know. So this is trig heavy, but it's just at the beginning. Once you have all these settled down, you're good. So as you can see, this will be equal to two times, what, what is this? We already computed it, it's this. So we're multiplying this by this. Just looking, if you multiply sine half x and cosine half x, it's this times this. What do you get? You get t on top. So we're gonna get two times t on top. And under, you're gonna get this times this, which gets rid of the square root sign. And you have t squared plus one, and you're done. You're done with all the things that you need for this computation, just by doing this t substitution at the beginning. So now let's go back. Oh, by the way, since we have made a t replacement, we need to know what t is gonna be. Well, we said t is going to be tan x over two. So if we evaluate t when x equals zero, our answer is gonna be tan zero over two, which is tan zero, which is zero. And if we evaluate t when t equals pi over two, it's gonna be tan pi over two divided by two. That's pi over four, which would be one, okay? So these are the two boundaries this has changed. So we can go back here now and say that this problem that we have here is equal to the integral from zero to one of one, over, now see what happens, one plus sine x. We said sine x is this, so let's just write it. It's gonna be two t over t squared 
plus 1 multiplied by, oh, we need to change our dx to dt, okay? I thought I was done with all the groundwork. If we take the derivative of both sides, we're going to have dt will be equal to the derivative of tangent will be secant squared, right? It's going to be secant squared x over 2, if we apply the chain rule, times 1 half. So there's going to be 1 half coming as the derivative of x over 2. But what is secant squared x over 2? Let's go back to the triangle. That's why it's beautiful. Because the secant, secant of this will be hypotenuse over adjacent, right? It will be hypotenuse over adjacent, which is just square root of t squared plus 1. That's going to be secant. And then when you square it, so this is going to be just t squared plus 1. That's what your secant is. So it means if we isolate dx, this is going to flip. It's going to be 2 dt over t squared plus 1. And that's what we're going to put there. So this is going to be 2 over t squared plus 1 dt. Now, I assure you, I assure you that this will always happen. That's why I said once you've done it once or twice, you know that this and this will always be the same thing, except that this is going to leave some t at the end of it. So see what happens. Our answer is going to be the integral of 0 to 1, from 0 to 1. Um, did we have anything that we took out? No. So 0 to 1, and then we're going to use this t squared plus 1 to multiply each of these terms. If you use t squared plus 1 to multiply this, you're going to have so here we have 2 over, we're going to have t squared plus 1. That's this times this. Maybe I should have written this in a more elaborate way. So now you see that this multiplies this, and this also multiplies this. Now when this multiplies this, it cancels this out. What you have left is just... And that's it, dt. Now guess what? I can pull this 2 out. I have this integral from 0 to 1. And t squared plus 1 plus squared is a perfect square, right? Because this is the same thing as 1 over t plus 1 squared dt. So here, do a quick u substitution just to be clear of what the boundaries will be. Um, if there were no boundaries, I'll just go ahead and say my answer. So we say let, we don't want to use u again. Okay, there's no u. We haven't used it. Let u be equal to t squared, t plus 1 rather. So it means u evaluated as 0 will be equal to 0 plus 1, which is 1. And u evaluated at 1 will be equal to 1 plus 1, which is 2. Okay, and that's it. And we know that du will be equal to dt. So we can go ahead and actually say that this integral here is the same thing as... Let's write 2 times the integral from 1 to 2, from 1 to 2 of 1 over u squared. And we said du is the same thing as dt. Well, this is equal to 2 times the integral from 1 to 2 of u to the minus 2. Oh, d, come on, du. <laughs> du. That's easy to integrate. Add 1 to this and divide it by the same answer. So we're going to end up with 2 times, let's put a box here. It's going to be u to the minus 1, which is 1 over u, minus 1 over u. That's actually what you get there. I'm done with oversimplifying, going from 1 to 2. Okay, I can pull this minus 1 out so it doesn't confuse me. It's going to be minus 2, and then here I have 1 over u evaluated from 1 to 2. What do I get? It's minus 2 times 1 over 2 minus 1 over 1. What does that give me? And minus 2 times minus 1 is going to be plus 2. Ooh, I see the answer is 1. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.